I think it's safe to say that for any racing fan, a dream of theirs would be to own their own team, to have the destiny of a driver in their hands to be able to compete at the highest level. And no place would this be more evident than in the NASCAR garage, a hive of high highs and the lowest of lows in all of sports. And in NASCAR, this definitely was seen by Furniture Row Racing. Furniture Row? Wait, like a mattress company? Yeah, that Furniture Row. Furniture Row was a Denver mattress company that was owned by Barney Visser. Visser became a racing fan and raced as a hobby in Colorado, where he met local racer Jerry Robertson, who he would partner up with to form Furniture Row Racing and go racing with in 2004 and 2005 in the NASCAR Bush Series. And this was, for the most part, pretty good. They had a part-time basis and really got their feet in the water and understood what it took to run a racing team at a high level. So, in 2005, they made their first cup start with none other than Kenny Wallace. Well, then in 2006, they started racing even more, about half the schedule, and they split it with veteran drivers. And for the next couple years, it was Kenny Wallace and Joe Nemechek, two drivers who are not going to set the world on fire, not probably even get top 20 runs, but they're going to keep the cars clean, get them qualified into the race, and ultimately get the groundwork laid for future endeavors. And it was a perfect way for them to start the team at a perfect time as well. With Furniture Row really funding the operation fully out of Barney Visser's business pocket, he was able to make it so that during the downturn of the economy, when a lot of teams went under due to sponsorship woes, he would be safe. With veteran drivers giving their input and getting the cars he had in the field, he was able to get the groundwork laid, like I said before, as well as get a bit of a springboard off that groundwork. So between 2008 and 2009, they made probably their biggest driver move ever to that point by going with a young driver, somebody they could build their team around. The 2008 NASCAR Cup Series Rookie of the Year, Regan Smith. Now, Regan Smith did not do many very special things when he raced at Dale Earnhardt Incorporated in 2008. The only thing that really stood out was the fact that Smith was oh so close to winning at Talladega in what is still one of the most controversial finishes in NASCAR history between he and Tony Stewart. But the team believed in him, and in 2009, they started out part-time, getting Smith a lot of that seat time he needed to get comfortable with the team, and also getting the team closer to the front each week. It wouldn't be shocking if you watched a through the field and Furniture Row Racing was sitting with Regan Smith in the top 20 now. And in 2010, they took another monumental step with Smith. They took it full-time. While he didn't finish in the top 10 at all, one thing Smith did was race all 36 races, and he brought home the car to a respectable 28th place points finish. It was impressive, but there still needed to be steps taken, and 2011 was when that next turn would be done. First off, in the first race of the year of the Daytona 500, he got the team their first top 10, a 7th place run in a crash-filled race that somehow he managed to bring that car home in. And it would only be a couple months later where the team would take another step, getting their first win at Darlington over Carl Edwards in the 2011 Southern 500. With this, the team ended up finishing 26th in the final standings, another good improvement, and after having a pretty good year overall, they were really looking forward to 2012, I think, to build upon even further and maybe become a top 20 team. Ultimately, that didn't happen. In the first 30 races, Regan Smith had three top 10s. And when he jumped over to sub in for Dale Earnhardt Jr., another driver came in that would change them forever, Kurt Busch. Busch was coming off a horrible run with Phoenix Racing and just needed a fresh start, coming over early before going there full time in 2013. And in the last six races of the season, Busch did really well. Like, finishing half those races in the top 10 well, which is a clip that no other span in their history Furniture Row had ever had. And in his first and only full-time season in 2013, while he didn't get a win, he had 11 top fives, 16 top tens, led almost 450 laps, and he gave the team their first ever chase appearance, only about seven or eight years after they finally got started. But 
like I said, it would not last long for Kurt Busch being there. And they would get their franchise driver finally in 2014, even if in that year it didn't seem like it, with Martin Truex Jr. Truex was coming off a good time and really career resurgence in a lot of ways at Michael Walter Bracing. While 2014 was a wash, having his head in other more important places, 2015 started the Martin Truex Jr. we see today as his breakout season. While getting one win at Pocono, we got 22 top 10s with insane consistency and managed to qualify for both his and the team's first final four appearance. While they finished fourth in points, it was an amazing step for the small Colorado team. And in 2016, he got four wins, but ultimately didn't make it as far. But 2017, that is where everything came to a head, where these two stories, the one of Martin Truex Jr. clawing back from irrelevance and furniture racing, seeming to beat all the odds, came together. He had eight wins that year, with 19 top fives, 26 top tens, 2,253 laps led. Oh, and by the way, he got a championship that year in one of the most deserving championships in NASCAR's history. And that same year, they even expanded for a single season with Eric Jones getting the 5-Hour Energy 77 car. It looked like at this point, 2018 would be even better for the team, even though they had to downsize to one car again. And while they got four wins, 20 top fives, and 21 top tens, they finished second in points. But still, it was an amazing season. They were part of what was called the Big Three that year. There was no way in any possibility you could say Furniture Road disappointed. You'd think that the team was just getting started and was going to become the next Hendrick Motorsports, displacing maybe even Joe Gibbs Racing as the top Toyota team. But by 2019, they were gone. On September 4th, 2018, Visser had announced that Furniture Row Racing would shut its doors. One of the big reasons was that sponsor 5-Hour Energy was leaving. Joe Gibbs Racing also was another reason, as they raised their rates for their alliance with the team by 300%. Visser said that to make up the cost for all this, they'd have to borrow money, and he wouldn't do that to continue at this high of a level. Plus, in 2017, Visser did have a heart attack two weeks before his team won their first title. Even with the charter system, the team wouldn't have enough money and enough traction to stay afloat. Now, this was probably one of the worst moments in recent NASCAR history, because, like I said, even with charters, Performance never mattered. The championship winning team, not even a year later, was shut down. And this proved that sponsorship determined pretty much anything going on at the track. It was why NASCAR sees so many problems and so many, for instance, pay drivers. Plus, Visser's heart issues were at the perfectly wrong time for this team. And ultimately, I don't blame him whatsoever for calling it a quits at that point when the future is uncertain. Joe Gibbs Racing, raising their rates by 300% is a ridiculous deal. Whether it was signed by Visser or Gibbs being unfair to the team, either way, it was terrible for the future of the Toyota program. And it was the start of many mistakes that Gibbs has made in the last six or seven years that has caused his team in the present day to be in flux. Furniture Row Racing would have been a pretty good deal for the Toyota Pipeline and probably could have helped them avoid a lot of the issues that they had with Kyle Busch and Kyle Busch Motorsports leaving the Toyota tree. Ultimately, I think what this proves is that the unfortunate legacy in a lot of ways of Furniture Row Racing is what might have been. That the issues of NASCAR's model and Joe Gibbs Racing in general ultimately caused the downfall of what could have been one of the next great superpowers in the sport. But with that... I'm going to pass it on to you and ask you, what do you think the legacy of Furniture Row Racing is? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.